Hello there ladies and gentlemen, my name is Buxty. If you guys are joining me as we play Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. So what is this game? Basically it's an old game. Um, it was I think first created in 1993. I remember playing it on an old PC back then and this game was my absolute favorite. I mean at about like 7 or 8 this game was already very difficult for me because you have to do a lot of reading and stuff like that and you have to form hypotheses based off facts and stuff and use various resources and it was really quite a good game I believe in my opinion then again um, not many enjoy this game um, this game and I gotta say this game has one of the best actings that you can ever ever have in the game so right now actually we are playing Sherlock Holmes consulting detective and this time is the case of the tin soldier so this has been the first Sherlock Holmes adventures that you guys have joined up with me I'm gonna introduce you to Holmes himself okay basically Holmes is gonna give the introduction London is not a beautiful city. Really? Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come. The game's a force. Alright, the game's food, boys. Alright, so basically, um, that was Peter Farley playing Sherlock Holmes. If you guys don't know who Sherlock Holmes is, you guys need to grow up or be more cultured. Uh, of course, Sherlock Holmes is one of the greatest detective uh, ever created, fictional maybe. Um, he was created by Sir yeah. Arthur Conan Doyle, um, a Scottish physicist. He actually introduced um, criminal Scientology, something like that, criminal science where you know they use science to solve cases and stuff like that and Sherlock Holmes was really revolutionary it revolutionized uh, not only fictional detective and mystery as a whole but more of uh, it revolutionizes uh, how criminal cases were handled they people actually use science and stuff to actually try to solve cases and this is where you got NCIS you got uh, I don't know a lot of other stuff uh, you can get on your basic Hollywood and even your uh, forensic science yes so Sherlock Holmes actually um ah, enough about Sherlock Holmes actually so let's go to the uh, regulars and I uh, would like Sherlock to explain him all so um, these are the few regulars that you can call upon on your uh, quest for to find information regarding uh, information regarding your cases and stuff these are the people you can go to uh, for example Hall Hall here is a barrister Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey he's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession Holmes don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor yes of course what 
A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. So your barrister is basically your lawyers, while your solicitor are more or less your paralegals and stuff like that. Of course, Mick here. Sir Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. So he is basically our uh, uh, correspondence in the morgue, basically. Um, Inspector Lestrade from Scotland oh, Yard. Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. Okay, so that's Lestrade. Um, he is basically your old man at Scotland Yard. Um, Murray, he is... Uh, this gentleman is the he works in the lab. At Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumoured that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. Um, Shinwell, who so works in the bar, of course. Of society, I dare say. But he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars. Or shall I say, a bar. Jolly good, <laughs> jolly good old man, well, jolly good. The bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. The portal is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past and I expect he will continue to be in the future. So basically, um, Shinwell is your bartender, and as you can see as we go along too, you get to see the rich backstories of all these characters, and they really put a thought into the storyline, which is one of this game's strength. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the Great London Library. It is a wealth of information. Ah, uh, so uh, we can go to Hogs here. Yeah? Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. So, um, Hawk there, um, he works as a journalist, but oh, he was an ex, uh, he was an ex-police detective. So yeah, he's useful as well. And of course, Pike here. Yeah. Now here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, especially on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. Okay, so uh, Somerset House. This is a records office, housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. Um, Alice here. Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's times. Ah, okay, so Ed he's Perth, more for foreign scholars, but... He's your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say, sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. Don't be an ass, Holmes. Alright, so basically, that's all the regulars that we are talking about. So, um, your sleuthing tools, of course. Um, the newspapers, you can use the newspapers. The, um, the directory, basically, where you go and meet all your uh, resources and all your contacts. Um, so this is the directory, the notebook of course, uh, this is where you get your clue history and stuff like that. Though uh, as you can see here, I do have a white screen on the, I think it's this side of the, it's on top of me, on top of me, yeah. I've already prepared that, uh, I already prepared that, uh, this is just, you know, to form another note uh, as we go along through the storyline. Um, of course, uh, video scenes, um, there are video scenes, I got to say, these are one of the web most well-acted video scenes i ever seen in a video game. Um, the judge, so basically the judge will ask a specific question, uh, basically if he wants to know if you managed to find out the story, the, the case files and everything, he, may, uh, he wants you to have enough evidence before you actually, he will put your criminal behind bars, so yeah. 
so clue points and stuff I, I basically do not understand the clue point system but yeah we're gonna play the game now so let's begin and uh, uh, look like I'm going to go to a settings I'm gonna uh, enable subtitles and we're gonna go for just about this is just about nice yeah so begin a new game so Inspector Smith is greeted at the door of 221 Baker Street by Holmes housekeeper Mrs. Hudson, the consulting detective and the good doctor bid him to enter. After foregoing a, a cup of tea, the inspector sits heavily in a sitting chair and looks to the man with anticipation. And here's they one of the... some assistance, Inspector Smythe. General Farmsworth Armstead, one of the six surviving Waterloo Tontine ticket holders, has been murdered. Waterloo Tontine? The Waterloo Tontine was a lottery of sorts, Watson. It was set up in 1815 to aid the veterans of the Battle of Waterloo. Wellington's victory over Napoleon. Yes, of course, I knew that. Quite an ingenious plan on the part of the founders. One pound bought a ticket in the name of some young relative. The ticket proceeds amounted to over a million pounds. Half went immediately to veterans and their families for medical and hardship expenses. What became of the other half? It all went into an account at the Bank of England where it's been collecting interest all these years. Very clever. And how does one win this prize? Simply by outliving all the other ticket holders. Mm. And now you say one of them has been murdered. Very suspicious. Who are the remaining five? The oldest is Captain Robert Jurgens, age 82. Then there are Nita and Claire Thomas, who are 80-year-old twins. William Rowland is 79, and Peter Dudley is 77. Uh, this is too fast for me to copy. Armstead was the youngest at 74. Seems as if he would have had the best chance to outlive the others. I recall reading something in the Times about a big to-do involving the Tontine survivors on the 18th. That's correct. The Waterloo Anniversary Banquet at the Langham Hotel. Why is the name... Armstead familiar. He was a noted art collector, I believe. He also authored a well-known book, Treasures of the Conquerors. Quite right. At the time of his death, General Armstead was working on a revised edition for his publisher, Norget and Company. It was to contain an entirely new chapter on a fabulous diamond called the Polar Star, which at one point belonged to Joseph Bonaparte, mm. Napoleon's brother. The general had new information which traced the gem to its present owner. Tell me about the circumstances of General Armstead's death. Oh, yes, of course. Well, let me see. At 10 o'clock this morning, the general's valet, David Sennett, admitted a call to the general's study. Sennett says he did not know the man. He was elderly and spoke with a French accent. Sennett told him the general never saw anyone in the morning while he was at work. Gentleman insisted that if Armstead read the letter he had with him, he would make an exception. And so it was. The Senate took the letter in, Armstead read it, and went quite pale. He told Senate to let the gentleman in. Sensing something amiss, Senate dawdled in the area of the study for the next 15 minutes or so. Then hmm. he heard the distinct sound of sword play. He tried to enter the study but found the door locked. Then he heard the crash of breaking glass. He raced to the kitchen and out the back door to enter the study from the garden. By the time he got there, the caller had vanished and the general was leaning heavily against a shattered display case of military miniatures. Before Senate could assist him, he dropped a saber from his hand and fell over dead. And I take it the letter which so upset the general was nowhere to be found. Correct, Mr. Holmes. Well, we shall put our brains and our feet to the task. Alright, so that was the gist of it. So basically, uh, General Armstead, of course, uh, he was found... Uh, he was, of course, found... Um, let's look through the notes. So, General Farnsworth Armstead, okay? So that's the guy that we are looking for. That's the victim. Farnsworth... Armstead, uh, one of the six surviving Tontine ticket holders, has been murdered. So, there are six surviving ticket holders, of course. Um, again, uh, you, there are two, mo two ways you can look at it. 
one, the murderer is going after the Tontine ticket holders, or you can look at it the other way, and the murderer is looking going after General Farm so Farmstead uh, interest in the Polar Star Diamond. Um, that is a uh, that by itself is. Some. We're not gonna go for clue hints and stuff like that. So general farms that Armsworth uh so things uh so he was a veteran of Waterloo I guess. So right now actually um there are so let's go for the background. We're going to go for history here. Background uh General Armstead of course was uh General Armstead was f m murdered. Oh, sorry. Situation. We're going. To, uh, we're going to go. We're going to use our nursing skills for this. Yeah, my nursing skills, not yours. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay. So General Armstead was found murdered at his home uh, after a visit by an elderly gen. After visit by an elderly gentleman by an elderly gentleman with a foreign accent um, the valet heard sounds of uh, the valet heard sound of uh, sounds of sword fight. F found the general dead. And of course, he found the general dead. And what else? Uh, he found the general dead and the the uh, the suspect. Yes, that's the word. The suspect has run away. So right now, motive. What we can explore? Two motives that we can explore right now uh, is the polar star diamond. Which I'm pretty sure is more on that, uh, other than the uh, or the Polar Star Diamond or the Waterloo Ticket Ton Time Ton Team. So we're gonna explore these two, these two, these two motives. So for the material. So right now the Polar Star Diamond is most likely a foreigner. So a suspicious foreigner. So that's all that we can have. That's all that we have right now. The suspect most likely is a a foreign gentleman. So a duel could have taken place of course. Uh maybe. So we have to look at all the suspects. Uh right now list of suspects I have right now is of course uh Robert Jugin Anita and Clara Thomas Anita Thomas and Clara Thomas We're not trying to go into the clue hints, we're trying to solve the problem as Sherlock Holmes would so it's gonna be a bit difficult, I guess. William Rowland and Peter Dudley. So right now, actually, so we got all the lists here. Uh, I wonder if you guys can see it. So I've tried to, you know, try to make the space smaller a bit because this is too, too, too large for me.
okay so um it could be that one so right now actually we're gonna we're done with the clue history so let's go to the newspaper and see uh the london times so there are four newspapers that we can read we're gonna read the first page one so uh roll violet roland uh, william roland So okay. So this uh there is a personal column here um from Roland of course could be Will our dear William Roland. So regret not keeping appointment. So suggest rendezvous at the society club soon as this is on the June tenth. So William Roland. R J could be a message to um Robert Jugan course RJ suspicious suspicious but then again this is all just facts so uh, William Roland sent a message to uh, send a message to Robert Jugan Captain Jugan I don't remember his name is Captain Jugan's uh, not being able to keep his appointment with him on June 10, 1890. Okay, so yeah, we got that already. Meanwhile, the Lady Lake of Finches holds all dowages for immediate enrollment in the Grand Plan. So, Anita and Clara Thomas, uh, Clara Thomas, I guess, no. Nope. Okay, so right now, this is still a mystery here. So, to that editor of time, sir, I've deposited the military exhibition at Chelsea, the most valuable piece of evidence to the birthplace of the great Duke of Wellington. Uh, nothing of interest to note. The Allen Line streamer, Palmer, went into a collision cause of fatal accident. Francis caught charges of murder. So, an inquest was held yesterday at the body who was shot by John Rowe. Ah, nothing of note. So, Strange Gale, bro, uh, there's a church, nothing of note again. Her Majesty's ship Fearless has captured and towed with, hun and towed with 131 slave boys and females on board South of Argus. The vessel has been condemned and the slave will be handed over to the government's authorities. Hmm, nothing of note. Knee suit for going, uh, Nothing. Okay, so there is a correspondence. Will you allow me to ask a question of your correspondence of who wants to do? Dora, Sightman, Ethan, and Typical Annie Chapman. Who would this crap? This is like so long. Ah, so 75th anniversary of the Waterloo Ball and dinner. So the Waterloo Tontain, they were supposed to meet on June 18. So the guests were supposed to be the one, two, three, four, five. The six. The six ticket holders were supposed to be. Uh, Langham Hotel on. June 18 Okay, so right now the Waterloo Town team hmm. So this was written about 10 days ago, okay, so nothing much at Langham Hotel Okay uh, Just publish Shakespeare William Moulton hmm. Lannisters! Aha! So the strange incident on the ancestral grounds of Duke Lannister came to a glad conclusion just uh, must be the Starks. <laughs> Speak Lord Deadpool, the head perpetrator, I would have got away with it if it weren't for those kids and the dogs. <laughs> this is basically a Scooby Doo reference and I don't know I don't know if they were referencing the Game of Thrones but yeah.
I don't think there's a house Lannister in um, London. So June 10, 1980, nothing interesting. Um, they spread all the way back. Uh, hmm. Let's see here. Uh, anything of note on the previous one? Ah, that goodbye. Uh, Sanders, going to Kessler. Ashley Denham. Waterloo Ball again. Was published on June 4th as well. So nothing on personal note. Marriages. Nothing on marriages. Birth. Uh, personal. Okay. Carl Jamel. Gentleman Grey Coat. <laughs> wow. So it gives you this uh, interesting history background on life in the Victorian age, I guess. Um, when you want to know some lady, you just, mm, instead of whatsapping the girl, you just go and place, uh, <laughs> I don't know, an advertisement on the newspaper like this guy here. Um, Wednesday 11.53 train, lady who left in the taxi and wave, care to know gent, grey coat, sincere. <laughs> Funny ass. Alright, so entertainment, nothing interesting. Uh, Royal Academy, nothing of note. We're doing a lot of reading here. So we have received following telegram, labour agitation in Spain. Disturbance at the Russian social club. So, nothing of note. Thames investigation. Ah, the investigating series of murders which have been plaguing the bank's bank site. So, Sunday murders, the third in the recent London barrister, has been shot twice for the absence of. Again, this could be of note, he could be a serial murderer again but then again I doubt it because um, our murder, our victim was uh, stabbed I believe most likely stabbed okay, so I doubt it, we can go back to it if it requires but nothing of note for me to take care of so nothing of nothing anybody writes here is of interesting to note on June 4th so on the June 1st 1980 1890, so um, nothing much. Go base funeral, 20 pounds missing. Mr. W.K. Jordan of the Royal Geographical Princess Theatre, nothing. Russian exhibition, Chambers of Horrors, Jackson, condemned cells. Man was not born. Uh, nothing of interesting to note. Yeah. New Scotland Yard. So personal lost gentleman's gold watch. Nothing. Sporting. Hmm. Ah, here's an interesting story. Um Murder in Bloomsbury. A murder was committed in Bloomsbury last night. Shortly after 10 p.m., Constable Lane, summoned by cries for help, entered the home of 42 Totten home, Tottenham. Mr. Mason. Uh, the crime not be brought home to any person, but the best detectives of Scotland Yard are involved. Disaster at sea. So, so there's a disaster here. Nothing much. Attack on Wednesday, Hyde Park. Ah, nothing on f note here on June first, and uh, on May thirtieth. Let's see our last newspaper for the day. So, mm, holiday J P J P. Do we have a J P here? Nope. Vicky no nope. Future. Anyone can give him Jacob Future. Nope. Nothing interesting in the personal page. Henry Spurgeon. Nope. We are need to assist a young lady in these circumstances to enable her to learn a profession with place her in an immediate position to gain competency. Literary occupation? Uh, nothing. New books. Hmm. I don't have anybody here. Ah! This is, is, of, this is of interest to note. Uh, Northgate to be published this summer. Including one featuring... Uh, the polar star ah, interesting so um 
an article was published in the Polar Star. I'm gonna screenshot this and then put it on my notes for a while for you guys to see it. Okay. Uh. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's look at my. Uh, let's go to the video page and see how else we're gonna solve. Go to the picture page. Um, it's good that we have all this uh, evidence to show to back us up. So the polar star diamond. So they have announced it. Okay. They have announced it on about May 30th. This was published in May 30th. May 30th. So this was published in May 30th, right? So this is of interest, alright? This is of interest right now to me. Because why? That means the murderer would have known on May 30th, 1890, that, uh, that, how should I say it? Uh, that they are publishing the, uh, an article on the Polar Star. So somebody must have known from the London Times on, on May 30th, 1980. So, clue notebook again. No, I'm going to get what Dr. Watson's hint. So, so when is the date today? Shit, I forget the day. When is the day? No, 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 no. Uh, sorry, I want to go back. No, I want to go back. No. Oh, shit. Okay, anyway, um, that's about it. I've read the history and stuff like that. We're gonna end this video now. So, we've already did our research through the newspaper and stuff. So, we form the hypothesis um, on the next turn and I will start going f to work out the cases from there so if you guys do enjoy this video and you want to see more do subscribe my name is Bugsteve thanks again for watching bye bye